called a label stack or an MPLS encapsulation. Next, we would talk about the label switch path and the routers. So we have covered on this that what is a label switch path and what are the routers in a label switch path. We will be del deliberating more onto that. Then we would talk about the IP MPLS labels, which is a very interesting and very informative to know that what are the tables in an IP MPLS. And we'll try to correlate it with the routing table or the switching table, which we generally do. Uh, next, we have the control and data plane. Control and data plane in a sense like, what is the control and data plane? And what does a control and data plane do in a router? We will also be talking about the VRF, that is the virtual routing and forwarding instance. I tried to give you a glance on the VRF yesterday. We will discuss in details today. We will talk about penultimate hop popping. Again, I have given an introduction on penultimate hop popping in yesterday's session, uh, which is the second last router. What does it do? Why it do so? And why is it required? So penultimate, the meaning of the word penultimate is second last. So to give you an understanding and to also relate it back to yesterday's session, whatever is being covered in today's session is somehow related to yesterday's session. It will be building upon the yesterday's session and some clue or some glance I have already provided. Then we will talk about the need for VRF. I believe you would be able to guess why we require a VRF based on our yesterday dis discussion. Then going further, how does that happen? After we have identified the need for a VRF, how do we actually achieve that need? So we achieve that need or that requirement through a route distinguisher, through a route target. And then we go on to explain the working of RD and RT. RD is route distinguisher, RT is route target. And the MPBGP, the multi-protocol BGP, which is a different kind of BGP that is actually used in an MPLS network. Then we will talk about the switching advantages. Just to give you a linking to yesterday's discussion and to bring it back from where we started, we will once again talk about the advantages of switching and why the MPLS, which is able to switch, is able to stand the wind or is still being used widely in the industry. So that is because of the switching advantages. And we will end the session, that is the entire four hour session, with the performance of the MPLS. So these topics would not be covering in one single session. So don't worry, it would not be an overdose. Uh, we will be covering all these topics in four hours till 1.30 p.m. today. Okay, so let's start. Talking about the MPLS encapsulation, the first topic of our discussion, which is label stack. Like every one of you could see on the screen, there is a layer two header. Layer two header is the data link layer, the data link layer. After that, we have the MPLS labels. And then we have the layer three packet. Let me take the pointer out here. So from layer two header to layer three, packet, we have yesterday discussed that MPLS labels are inserted in between the layer 2 and layer 3. And that is the reason some people even call MPLS a layer 2.5 technology because it is inserting shim labels or the sham labels or the sham header between the layer 2 and layer 3. So we already know what is the architecture of these labels. It has a 20 bit label. It has got a three bit experimental field. It has got one for the bottom of stack. It has got eight bits for time to live. I hope every one of you remember the architecture of an MPLS label or an MPLS header. The most important part of that MPLS header is indeed the MPLS label, 20 bit field, and it can generate two to the power 20 numbers of labels in a single instance or in a single instance in a sense like we can have 2 to the power 20 labels in this scenario. 
So that many labels can be inserted between the layers. But that is not our requirement. That will never be the case that 2 to the power 20 labels are being inserted. It's more about having a couple of labels to achieve objectives such as quality of service. So it says that certain link layer technologies can carry labels as part of the link layer header. Example, ATM and frame relay. So we discussed about ATM yesterday. What happens in ATM was that it can carry this label, this MPLS label, MPLS label in a sense, an ATM label, I would say, because that's an ATM technology, an ATM label as part of their link layer header. But ATM had its own disadvantages. We have discussed it is primarily two disadvantages. One being it requires a specialist who would be able to manually engineer the traffic and there is a wastage of bandwidth to the tune of 20% on an average. Link layers that do not support labels in their header carry them in a shim label head. So that's what MPLS do. So MPLS actually do not add the head, uh, header or do not add the label in the layer to itself. It actually adds it as a shim label, as a separate label. That's why it is called layer 2.5. MPLS header is prepended to packet with a push operation at the ingress node. I believe everyone now understand what is an ingress node. Ingress node is nothing, an entry point. So at the entry point, with respect to the circuit we are talking about, or with respect to the direction of data flow we are talking about, like we have discussed yesterday that if this is the location of Hyderabad and this is the location of Bangalore, and if the data flow is from Hyderabad to Bangalore, then the router which is at the Hyderabad location will be called an ingress router. It will be called an ingress node or it will be called an ingress label switch router. So this ingress node will actually prepend the packet with a push operation. So we have also seen a pictorial representation where we have seen one IP packet that enters this ingress node and that IP packet is actually added with a label, it is added with a label. So this label, so this layer 3 packet, this ingress node will actually receive layer 2 header and layer 3 packet, this kind of data it will receive and this MPLS label 1 will be prepended to this IP packet with a push operation at the ingress node. Then the label is added immediately after layer 2 encapsulation header. That we also know the label is added immediately after the layer 2 encapsulation header. Packet is restored at the end of the LSP. LSP is nothing but the label switch path because now the packet will be flowing through a series of routers and it will create a path for itself. So that path which is created by the label switch routers, it is called the label switch path. This packet will then come back in its original form. Now this extra label, MPLS label will have to be removed. Why it has to be removed? Because the customer and network, this is a customer and network which is having a router, it is not running MPLS. So if it is not running MPLS, that means it cannot understand the label. So if it cannot understand the label, that label has to be removed. So that label removal is done with a POP operation at the end of the LSP. Now we will also understand whether it happens at the end of the LSP or it happens at the second last router of that LSP. So that's what is written here. Normally the label stack is popped at the penultimate node. So it is not being popped at the last router. It is not being popped at the egress node. It is popped at egress minus one node. And there is a valid reason for doing that. It is being pushed at the ingress node, but it is being popped at the penultimate node. So this is very important to understand why the popping happens at the penultimate node. This slide gives you I would say it gives you a food for thought, like why the popping is happening at the penultimate node and not at egress node. I would like you to think onto that before we discuss onto that particularly. So this is just for information that RFC 3032, you can look onto that uh, on the internet. RFC 3032 is actually talking about the MPLS label stack encoding. So this MPLS encapsulation or the MPLS label stack wherein multiple labels can be stacked one over the another is being talk, uh, is, has been spoken in details in the RFC 303. Okay.
So if in case there are any questions on this slide itself, uh, you can put in the chat window and we can discuss right away. I believe that would be a better way to give a better understanding because I'm looking in the chat window simultaneously. In the meantime, I will move to the next slide. So we will now be explaining and building upon our understanding of yesterday's discussion, wherein we have spoke, uh, we have spoken about labels. So there are primarily three operations in labels. One is a push. We have already discussed at the ingress node. We will again discuss. Another is the pop, which we have discussed that happens at the penultimate node. It does not happen at the egress node. And the third operation is the label swapping. So label swapping, label swapping is swapping. Swapping as a word says, you have to swap the label. So for example, this router. Now this router is called an LSR. That is a label switch router. Now label switch router, like we have discussed, it can be a provider edge router. It can be a provider router. So maybe, yeah, okay. So we have a question on penultimate node. Penultimate node, we will be discussing, I just, wanted to uh, give you a food for thought so that you also start running your brains in the back end. Like what is the function of a penultimate node? At this point, I would say penultimate node as the word, the literal meaning in English suggests is the second last node. Okay. So we have yesterday seen that from Hyderabad to Bangalore, if you want to go, there would be multiple routers, right? So if this is a path, from Hyderabad to Bangalore. This I'm discussing one question that has been addressed by Mr. Ahmed. Uh, sorry, a question by uh, okay, question by someone which is on penultimate node. What I wanted to tell you is that from Hyderabad to Bangalore, if your packet is going and these are the routers in between, and if this is the data flow, then this is the ingress router and this is the egress router. This second last router is the penultimate router or the penultimate node for this circuit, for this direction of data flow, where the label switch path is one, two, three, four. Okay. So that is a penultimate node. What I'm trying to say is that the label popping does not happen at the egress node. It happens at the penultimate node. And there is a reason for that. I want you to think on that before I formally announce that reason. Next question is all the MPLS label will be sent in one shim header. Yeah, there are multiple headers that one MPLS header is one shim header. That one shim header consists of one label and the experimental bits and the bottom of stack and the time to date. So if there are three labels, that means there are three headers. Actually. If popping is done at penultimate node, then how switching is done from penultimate node to egress node. That's what I want you to think. Please think on that before putting that question. You think why the switching happens, how the switching is done at penalty, uh, at the egress node, or why the popping is done at penultimate node. Try to think. The clue for that thinking, I would say, is that there could be an overhead on the last router. So you try to relate it to the processing power of that route, uh, last router, you try to relate what is the job of that last route. So is the last router, that is router number four in the scenario, will it be overloaded if he has to also pop the label? So that is the clue. I guess that must give you the answer. Please explain what necessity is to use multiple labels on a single packet, how they are executed. Ankurji. Yeah. You can go through the chart box at the end of the session. Just don't yeah. go through chart just to you complete your session first okay fine fine i'll do that okay fine fine of just, session, they will okay. keep on coming otherwise <laughs> fine fine we'll take uh, at the end of the session fine sir fine fine we can have that at the end of the session so we were discussing about the forward forwarding through label swapping so forwarding we are label swapping where we have the provider edge router and the provider router, what I'm trying to say is that the label switch router, which will do the operation of swapping, will be a provider router. It can never be a provider edge router. Why? 
because at the provider edge router, which is actually at the edge and it is connected to the customer circuit, that has to come with, that has to be actually inserted with a label or that has to be actually removed from a label. So the provider edge router will never do the swapping of the labels. The swapping of the labels will happen in the core of the service provider, will happen at the provider label switch router only. So swapping is that you replace the label 288 with a new label 417. How do you do that? You do that based on the tables, the IP MPLS tables, which we will discuss about. Why do you do that? You do that because you have to forward this data packet to the next interface. So that is the reason behind a label swapping and that is the procedure of a label swapping and that is uh, also who is doing the label swap. Okay. Then the popping of labels, we already know how this popping of label happens. It has to be removed. So a router that is an LSR router. Why it is an LSR? Because it is a label switch router because it is doing an MPLS function. It gets a packet of 288. This is the direction of the flow of the packet. He has to remove that label. Why he has to remove that label? Because the end router does not understand the labels. So the end router does not understand the labels then he has to remove that label. That is a popping operation. See, this is what is being given here. A uh, question was also being asked, why do we require multiple labels? So if in case there are two labels, 288 and 577, then the popping operation will actually remove only the 288. Only the 288 in a sense, the last label. This is an MPLS stack. This is MPLS label one. This is MPLS label two. After that, there will be a layer three packet. So it has to be removed and we get a 577. Now one advantage or one application of doing so is the quality of service. Quality of service, I will not deliberate much because it becomes a different class altogether. But what I can tell you is that if you have voice, video, data, okay, these are the three things and you want to prioritize uh, the kind of data you want, then these three types of data, voice, video or data, they can be tagged with a particular label number and they will be given priority in the service. So it is somehow related that this label actually tells that this actually means the router which is connected in the customer end scenario will actually understand labels and he will be able to do the quality of service. So I guess that would be the enough understanding because we must understand the basics first and then maybe deliberate on to the advanced topics if required. So multiple labels are required for the need of the quality of service. Now this is a pushing of labels, pushing of labels again, there is a data packet that comes at the ingress node and the ingress node adds a label onto that. That is a pushing operation. If it's already it is having one label onto it, the another label can be added, creating an MPLS label stack. So each of the labels will have their own functionality. They might be a re reserved label. Now the MPLS label stack can also be used in case of the reserved label. If you want to achieve some operations related to quality of service or other ones. Now this is the concept of penultimate hop popping. Uh, this is where your uh, logic would be answered, which you might have thought so far. So what happens here is, uh, this is router number one. Okay, this is router number two, this is router number three, this is router number four. Same example we will use to try to relate it. This is your Hyderabad location and this is your Bangalore location. Packet is flowing from Hyderabad to Bangalore and it is using the routers number one, two, three, four to reach the Bangalore location. The router number one is the ingress router or the ingress LSR. It will do the push operation. So a plain IP packet comes from the Hyderabad office of RSA with a destination IP address, which is destined to the Bangalore location that is actually prepended with the label number 233. So that is a push operation that has happened. Now this 233 has to be swapped with another label and that label becomes triple six. These are all random numbers, 
uh, which are automatically generated by the router using the MPLS table. So we do not have to worry why the number is triple six or why the number is two, three, three. That all happens automatically. The moment you enable the LDB protocol, the moment you create the VRF and you assign the IPs in that network, it happens automatically. The label is generated automatically at all the label switch routers. That is replaced with the number triple six because it has to forward it to router number three. So this triple six, what you can understand is correlating to the next interface. Based on the number, it actually tells you, it actually tells the router number two where it has to forward, from which interface it has to exit. So this router will have multiple interfaces, right? You all understand that it has multiple Ethernet interfaces. So if we call this as interface number one, interface number two, interface number three, interface number four. So when a packet with a label of 233 enters the router number two at interface number two, should it forward to interface number one, four or three will actually depend upon the label it assigned to it, will actually depend upon the MPLS table. So it assigns it a uh, label triple six and decides that it has to forward it on the interface number four. The interface number four is connected to interface number three of the next router. That is the number three of the number three router. The number three router again swaps it and gives it to the last router, which is router number four. Now this router number four has got two things to do. One, he has to remove this IP uh, he has to remove the label. He has to remove the label 417. Why he has to remove the label 417? Because the Bangalore router, which is a customer end router, is not running MPLS and he cannot understand number 417. He can only understand an IP packet. So he has to do the job of popping. He has to remove the label 417. After removing the label 417, he has to actually he in the sense, the router number four, the egress router, the egress router actually has to do an IP lookup for the destination IP, which is contained in this IP packet, because he has to go to the correct destination address. So he has to find out what is the exit interface, where it has to exit that packet, where that packet has to go. So he has to perform two jobs. One is the popping, which is the removal of the label number 417 in this example, because the router on the other side, which is a customer and router cannot understand the label. And second, he has to do an IP lookup. That means he has to look for the destination IP address in this IP packet. Okay. So the processor of the router is overburdened. The processor of the router is overburdened because he has to do two jobs of popping an IP. So, <clears throat> Sorry. So what do we do is that we introduce a concept of penultimate hop popping. Penultimate hop popping, as the name suggests, is the second last router. So in this example, it will be the router number three. Router number three is the second last router. He will actually share the load of the last router, which is router number four, by doing the pop operation. So he actually will remove this triple six label, which will then go to the router number four as a plain IP packet. And because it is a plain IP packet and the router number four, the egress router does not have to remove the label. He does the simple job of an IP lookup and gives it to the customer. It is also very important to understand that the swapping, popping, pushing, or whatever the operation is related to labels is actually a switching operation. When it is a switching operation, by definition or by the nature of switching, it is faster. It is faster to switch than to route. Why? Because routing involves the IP lookup. Routing involves the job of looking into the IP packet and finding out the destination address and finding out the exit interface, which is not there in the case of switching. The switching only it has to switch to the next interface based on that link. There is like there is no 
better explanation to explain that why the switching is faster than routing. It is a known fact. Switching is faster than routing. You can say it's a known observation or it's a known phenomena wherein the switching is faster than routing. So all this thing is happening to relate it to the last slide of this presentation, which is advantages of switching and the performance of MPLS. So because in the core of the MPLS, we are doing the switching, it becomes fast. And we are also doing the penultimate hop popping, thereby reducing the load onto the last router and again making it fast. Had it been a pop plus IP lookup on the last router, the last router will be overburdened and the advantages which we got by switching the labels, by moving from routing to switching and having a BGP free core and not doing the routing in the core will be uh, taken off by not doing a penultimate hop pop. So when a label is being pushed, popped or swapped, it is actually based on the IP MPLS tables. It is not looking into the IP packet. So the load is actually being reduced. Okay, so this is all about penultimate hop popping. In simple words, again, to uh, make you understand the concept better, the penultimate hop popping is done in order to reduce the load onto the last router, which otherwise will have to do two operations. One being the popping of the label because the customer and router does not understand labels. And second, he will have to actually look up onto the IP packet to find the destination IP address. So to save on to the processing power of the last router, penultimate pop popping or penultimate router is doing the job of removing the link. Okay, moving forward, <clears throat> we knew that what is in label switch path. So a label switch path, this is again a pictorial representation of how a label switch path will be created. And it is also again trying to uh, give you an understanding of what we have discussed. So there is a customer IP network. The customer IP network, again, we can consider it to be Hyderabad and customer IP network of Bangalore. And they are geographically spread out. And the packet has to move from Hyderabad to Bangalore. So what happens? This is the cloud or the MPLS network of Railtel. Again, you try to correlate it back. This will be the label edge router or the provider edge router and this will also be the label edge router or the provider edge router because it is connected to the customer IP network. All of these will be the provider routers because they are within the core of the MPLS network of Railtel and this indeed is the very core of the MPLS network and this would primarily consist of high-end routers such as MX960 in case of Railtel. So from this case, what happens is that the moment the packet comes to the LER, the label edge router, it will actually look on to the destination IP and try to find the next interface where it has to forward the packet based on the IP tables. So this is the path it has chosen based on the MPLS protocol and the underlying interior gateway protocol, which could be OSPF in this case it decides that he has to pick this path, this white path. So this is the white path that is from this router number one, it goes to router number like maybe two and then router number three and then router number four and then finally ends up <clears throat> at the customer IP network. So what is this picture showing is that we have some core functions which are done by the core routers. That core functions in this scenario would be a label swapping. So we don't want to burden, we don't want to overburden the core routers of the service provider. That's why they are only doing the swapping operations because they will actually be important. They will actually be terminated with the backbone networks of the service provider, the high end backbone networks. That's why they have to be kept isolated from the customer network. That's why we do not use them as provider edge router. So the core functions happen here, the edge functions. That is, we all know that routing happens at the edge and switching happens in the core. So the routing functions, the IP lookup functions will be happening at the edge routers. So these edge routers will be <coughs> provider edge router for some other customer. So this edge router is a provider edge router for this particular customer, which could be Indian Railways or Innocent, and he is doing the function of routing. He is the edge router who is doing the function of routing. 
these are the core routers who are doing the function of switching so what we need to understand from this slide is that there are two kinds of operations or there are two kinds of functions which is routing at the edge and switching in the core so that is very important to understand and correlated to whatever we have studied so far routing at the edge will happen by the edge routers switching in the core will happen by the core routers or the provider routers additionally the last router if he is also given the job of switching which is a core function he will be overloaded that's why the penultimate router is actually doing the pop operation is actually doing the switching operation and saving on to the processor capacity of the edge router who only have to do a routing function so i hope that it is very clear about the two core functions about the two functions in mpls which is routing and switching and where does it actually happen okay so in this previous diagram please uh, show the penalty met uh, pop this is the penalty this is the penultimate pop router because this is the path that has been selected so let me label once again this is the customer and router hyderabad this is router number 1 then it moves to like it moves from here to here so this is router number 2 from here it goes on to router number 3 then it goes on to router number 4 see this slide has limited space so you don't think that this router which i told earlier is the core router mx960 router with the penultimate pop router it is actually not there actually is a one more router this is just a pictorial representation there are hundreds of routers the core routers are actually separated and they will not become the penultimate pop router for any circuit because there are multiple routers after that. there are multiple low end routers after that so after this router number 3 in this white space this white space is actually showing that there are some routers so the router which is just before the last router if you call this as the last route if we call this as the last router which is the egress router which is the ler the label edge router whatever is the last router before this will be the penultimate hop router the penultimate hop router will keep on changing why it will keep on changing because the egress and the ingress routers will keep on changing depending upon that particular circuit depending upon that particular label switch path label switch path will also change depending upon if there are backbone cable cuts in this network and some paths are not available or even some routers are not available the label switch path will automatically change and it will find out a new penultimate hop router there is always a possibility what you need to understand is that the second last router in a label switch path will be the penultimate hop router in that direction the direction is also important if the direction is reversed that means if you come from bangalore to hyderabad router which is here in this white space will become the penultimate hop route will become the php it is called the php penultimate hop popping okay so let us move on to the next slide uh okay the next slide is talking about the uh, again like similar concept i would say similar concept in a different context which is like you have an ip packet that ip in and the ip out what is this ip in ip out in a normal router in a normal router which is not doing an mpls will be having an ip packet and then he will exit that ip packet right there will be the ip packet will enter this router this router is this is the the expansion of the router this particular blue thing is actually the expansion of the router it is having two kinds of table so this is an introduction to move on to the ip mpls tables it is having an ip forwarding table and it is having a label swapping table so in a normal scenario where mpls is not being used the ip packet with the destination ip is forwarded on to the exit interface of that router 
using the IP forwarding table. This router will have many exit interfaces and many entry interfaces. So from one of the interface, an IP packet comes. That IP packet has to exit that router based on the IP forwarding table. I believe you are all aware uh, what happens in an IP forwarding table. To give you a quick glance, there will be a IP address and there will be the interface, the exit interface, and there would be the next hop IP address. So these are the main things. That is, you have an IP packet that comes into it. Uh, you have the exit interface, and then you have the, the next hop IP address. Simple. Now, if it is a MPLS packet, now there is an MPLS packet. This can be an MPLS packet. Why it can be an MPLS packet? Because this could be a provider router. So a provider router can have the number 23, which is a random number, which is a random label number, which is labeled from the label field of the MPLS header. We know that it's a 20 bit field. So that number is generated randomly uh, based on the tables. So it comes in, he may actually do a number of things. He may actually swap it with 77. He may actually pop it to give the IP back. Okay, so this also explains you the forward equivalence class. I have spoken about the FEC concept, which is the forward equivalence class yesterday in my session where I told that every IP packet is being treated in the same fashion by the router. So this IP packet if he is an IP packet, he can simply go out as an IP packet using an IP forwarding table. If this is an MPLS packet, that means he has a label onto it. He can, he will also be treated the same way. He will also be treated in the same way in a sense. He can also go out as an IP packet if that is a requirement, or he can go out as a new MPLS packet with 77 being swapped onto it or 77 being inserted onto it as per the requirement. So this represents the IP lookup, look, sorry, IP lookup and the label push. See label push in a sense like the IP packet, the plain IP packet which comes into the router is being pushed with a new label 77. Where will it happen? It will happen at the ingress router. And the green color actually represents the label pop. That is the, I, the packet with the label of 23 is being popped to give you a final IP packet. Uh, a plain IP packet. Where will it happen? It will happen at the PHP route. Let me explain this slide once again uh, because it actually covers everything we have discussed so far. It covers everything in a sense. It covers the push operation. It covers the pop operation. It covers the swap operation. It also slightly talks about the forward equivalence class. So an IP packet which comes into a router can go out of the router as a normal IP packet. We all understand that. That is done using an IP forwarding table. An IP packet which comes into the router can also exit out of the router as an MPLS packet if it is being inserted with the label 77 in this case. Okay, so it represents the this thing. The pink color shows the IP lookup plus label push. So a normal IP packet is being pushed with the label 77. This operation can happen at the ingress router. An MPLS packet with a label of 23 can be swapped with a new label of 77. So this is the operation. MPLS in, MPLS out. An MPLS in packet can also exit as an IP packet. Okay. How it can exit as an IP packet? By using the pop -up. So this is the pop. <coughs> Sorry. So an IP packet can go out as an IP packet. An IP packet can go out as an MPLS packet by using the push operation. An MPLS packet can go out as an MPLS packet using a swap operation. An MPLS packet can go out as an IP packet using a pop. And we will discuss about if if you have any doubts onto this. Let me check. Uh, okay. 
So I believe we can discuss the question. Uh, uh, we would be breaking for uh, like we would be going for a break after one hour, or we would be continuing. After one hour, we'll take more ten minutes. Okay. Uh, ten o'clock, so, we'll take a break. I would uh, suggest that to... we go for questions in these last ten minutes. Yes, yes. Because otherwise, many advanced concepts will come. So I'll just to switch on to the this mode. And I can go through the couple of questions which are already there in the chat windows. In the meantime, please free to ask any other questions on the label stacking, on swap operations.